I'm really excited to be here today and um, to welcome you to a new program, the HP Helion Most Valuable Professional Program. And here in this room today, we have several of our brand new MVPs who will be presenting to you in sort of a showcase style. And uh, I want to talk just a little bit with you about our agenda and then just run through really quick a little bit about the MVP program. Maybe that's better? OK. So um, today, I'm just going to do a brief introduction. And then I'm going to turn it over to Kenneth. And Kenneth is doing a talk on um, OpenStack for VMware. And um, Martin is doing a conversation on the OpenStack community. And Sriram Subramanian will be doing a talk on running uh, workloads in OpenStack Cloud. And then we'll take a brief break. And then we have a really great tech panel coming up with um, Nigel Cook from Intel, hosted by Michael A. Day from um, HP, and then also featuring a couple of our MVPs. And then uh, closing out our day, uh, Farron Rodanis will be doing a talk on OpenStack and Cloud Foundry, and then just a brief closing and a couple of reminders about some cool things happening this evening. So just really quickly, I want to talk a little bit about the MVP program, which is really why we're bringing this together today. So we decided to reward and acknowledge deep technical experts who also are great influencers in the online and offline communities. And these community leaders have been recognized with the HP Helion MVP Award. Right now, we have about 20 HP Helion MVPs around the world, and we have a great representation here today. So I hope you all enjoy the presentations. And without further ado, I am going to go ahead and turn it over to Kenneth. Okay. You can just let Kenneth in and we'll go offline. Thank you, Martin. Can you give me the timing? I'll time it. Okay, thanks. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Martin Kiss, and I am one part is an OpenStack ambassador, and I am the one of the guy who founded the Hungarian user group in, in Eastern Europe in Hungary. And as an OpenStack ambassador, I am started to build up the Central European user groups. So anyway, a uh, little different question. Who saw the keynotes today? Yeah, so Hungary was a little bit overrepresented today about <laughs> this internet texting story. So I it will be my personal opinion anyway, but, but I think it is so stupid thing that I'm sure that it is just some cover story to hide something other different political thing in Hungary. So I'm sure we won't pay any additional tax on internet there <laughs> because it will ruin the entire uh, internet economy in Hungary in that form. Okay, so we started this uh, OpenStack Hungarian user group and uh, we have some very nice initial goals. First of all, drink beer and talk about OpenStack. Um, basically, I started OpenStack um, more than four years ago in the very, very early days. And when I first downloaded the source code, um, it was very simple and I heard it came from NASA. And my first thought was that I don't want to travel to with this spaceship. And uh, uh, it had a very bad quality, but I came from the telecommunications sector and we were running uh, services in 24 per 7 um, way and uh, uh, everything needed to run. And when I first checked the architecture of OpenStack, I saw it have the same enterprise archi architecture that we used to use in, in telecommunication sector. So I thought uh, uh, that uh, we can start something similar 
as the other open source uh, groups are doing, maybe start some community, because one of the most important leg of, of um, open source uh, uh, projects is the, is the open, open source community, because uh, maybe if we are referring back to Canonical or Ubuntu, there are a lot of uh, communities exist all around the world. And I talk nobody is doing that in Hungary, and we can start on or, or lead something similar there. So, so we started this uh, in this uh, transit cafe place. There was maybe just five five of us then two years ago, and since then we built up a very diverse community. Um, for example, most of the open stack diversity. Uh, can be seen in, in Budapest, in the user group, because there was some startup represented, some the education sector, enterprises, small businesses, uh, financial and telco sector. And the goal of this user group that we can sit down and talk about OpenStack without any um, vendor related things or very similar types. And, uh, it was it was very nice to know what the others others started to do with OpenStack, how they wanted to deploy that uh, solution. So we started with five people, and somehow we needed to raise the number of attendees and uh, tell about OpenStack, the the DevOps culture, and this entire open source cloud thing to others. So we needed to build up the promotion channels from scratch. Um, what I want, uh, wanted to start to uh, get more people into this community. And uh, first of all, I try to find other open source communities. Like for example, I go to the Python group or I go to the, the Linux group and I try to tell uh, this open stack story to them and invite them to participate in our community. And I also get some invita invitation to different conferences where I can introduce open stack and uh, we can participate on some mini road show. For example, with a guy from the Hungarian user community, we traveled to Slovenia and Croatia and Serbia and we had a little talk to enterprise customers about the opportunities we can see here. And of course, uh, as an OpenStack ambassador, uh, I um, used to do some vendor presentations. For example, I had a talk in front of HP customers in Hungary, or for example, I get an invitation from Oracle in Wien, and I was talking about uh, OpenStack uh, there. So in Eastern Europe, we had some very interesting challenges building up this user group because we experienced a lot of cult cultural difference. Uh, for example, the Eastern Europeans, people used to be shy and don't like to ask questions. I, it is a very interesting thing because if you are going to a meetup in the Silicon Valley, it is very open and every everybody is very positive. But uh, but in Eastern Europe, and it is not just true for Hungary, it is, it is true for Poland and the other countries, uh, people don't like to ask questions. Um, maybe it have, uh, it, it is very interesting because, uh, yeah, I think it has some historical reasons and maybe some deep roots in the educational system, but, but it is true. So we are trying to challenge them to ask questions and open up and try to participate in the community activity. The other challenges we experienced, the so-called enterprise silos. That, for example, if HP has some customer, he is very tightly um, linked to HP. And uh, this is true for VMware and the others. And it was very hard to us to reach the enterprise sector. Um, because startup companies started to adopt OpenStack and started to sh do some pilot projects. But the enterprise guys start are waiting for for some some sales pitches from different vendors, and uh, it, it was very hard to open them up and and uh, invite them to the community. But but it happened during the, the maybe the last one year. The another challenge was that the typical we used to do that way attitude, that we are don't want to use cloud, 
because we used to use virtualization and maybe some some legacy hypervisor system and I don't want to change and I don't want to learn new things. So we needed to change that somehow and and um, some collaboration inside the user groups and free speaking and discussion next to some beer helps to break down those barriers. So now we have a very active community. We have regular meetings in, in Budapest and we have a so healthy core member, a new ratio. So we have a very active uh, core community there and we always have newcomers. And um, we have almost around 300 members in Hungary. So regarding back the size of the country, I think it is a very nice number. And we reach that it, it is a real graph, so, so it represents the, represents the real, real uh, growth of, of the community. So hmm? it is not going down. So, so I, I have, um, I, I'm used to tell that if somebody knows Monty Python, there was a theory about the brontosaur, that every brontosaur is very, very weak at the start and very strong in the middle and weak at the end again. And, and it is uh, true for every other open source project. So every other open source project is very bad in the, in the start and the early days. And it can grow, um, grow very quickly. And if it survives this growth period, that it will be a successful open source project. And I think the, this uh, same story is, is true for, for OpenStack. And we are in, in the weak part currently, and we are just growing and, and climbing that mountain currently. So, so this is our status of, of the user group. OK, so we build that user group. We used to do regular meetings. So we enjoy that. But uh, what is the next step? So we decided to organize a one-day mini conference called OpenStack CAD. It was two years ago. and. Um, it is my seventh summit here, here in Paris. And I started in, in Boston. And uh, when we were in Boston, OpenStack was a very small community. And it was like a small village. Everybody knows everybody else. And I have those connections and, uh, and use that. And even uh, we can invite some key people of OpenStack. Maybe Jonathan Bryce came to Budapest and visit our conference. But uh, we started to focus Central Europe as a whole, not just Hungary. So we planned to do an all-day business and technical sessions because those days um, the summits was available in the United States only. And most of our audience uh, cannot afford to, to travel to an OpenStack summit, maybe into the States. And uh, it was very hard to ask their bosses to let them out to those type of conferences. So we brought OpenStack to, to Central Europe. And uh, we convinced some very, very nice speakers from the OpenStack ecosystem. And uh, we had a little bit different scale task there, there because we needed to find the proper venue. We needed to hire some staff to handle the event. We need to manage the internet connection for several hundred people. We needed to manage some registration badges. We needed to start an event promotion, um, manage the speakers and handle the hotel bookings. And of course, uh, it cannot run without money. And it have a different budget than a simple meetup group. Um, so we needed to handle the funding and the sponsorship part also. But we managed that, so we already have two uh, one-day conferences in Budapest. So the first one was in a Boscolo New York Palace. So it was a bit confusing. Some people could talk that it is not in Budapest, but in New York. But, but everybody finally find that. And uh, we had this format that we have morning keynotes. And we split that on the afternoon into a business and uh, in into a technical track. So we have case speakers, for example, Jonathan Bryce or Tim Bell from CERN, CERN did a wonderful uh, presentation there, Bruce Davy from VMware or Joe Gordon from HP. And in, uh, in the next year, we can um, do it in a very nice uh, uh, theater in Budapest. 
and the, we changed a little bit the section format because we had morning keynotes, we had the business and technical trucks, and we started to organize workshops. So everybody could bring his own notebook and maybe can try to deploy DevStack and, and learn about the key influencers of, of OpenStack. So we have a lot of support from, from other vendors, and maybe we had even a PTL, Mark McLean came from, from he was a Neutron PTL those days. So, so it was very nice. So we have around uh, 250 visitors from 11 different countries, and finally we got back very positive feedbacks from even from the speakers and, uh, and from the audience. So it seems to be that we will organize uh, in the next year. So we have some future plans for that. We plan to do more training because uh, currently it is lacking the training part and we need to educate the people how to use OpenStack. And we want to extend the international channels. For example, we want to start new user groups in Poland and we want to strengthen the user groups uh, in Czech Republic and Bulgaria and other Central European uh, country. And what we want, we want to keep the vendor diversity. So we are always checking uh, not to give the entire show just into one vendor because OpenStack is a very diverse community and we want to display the same very diverse ecosystem in, in this event. So basically, this is our story in, in Hungary and this is what we want to do there. Yeah, I think recruiting is uh, very important there because everybody see that uh, it is very, very hard to find proper people with OpenStack skill sets who is ready. And, and usually to teach somebody for OpenStack maybe took uh, six months to one year. And there is a huge race between the companies to he hire the most uh, skilled people. And it is very hard. So, but we see it a little bit different way. So we saw the, the old school or so-called legacy system administrator way that I'm used to deploy maybe Apache servers or MySQL servers as a repetitive task. But managing OpenStack and using this DevOps culture is totally different. So we need people with different skill sets. We need a system administrator who understands the code or can automatize all of the previous tasks he did. So, so I think this hiring story is good for OpenStack currently. And we, we used to be careful not to let just one company to, to present uh, his, his job affairs. So if somebody comes and, and everybody uh, ends his presentation, we are hiring now. But but we used to give space for others to t tell about what they are planning, who they want to, how they want to hire new people, and what type of jobs are available there. And I'm used to motivate the people, especially when I talk in technical u universities and somewhere else, that it is a good career opportunity for them to to join to OpenStack and and get hired quickly and and join into a fantastic new ecosystem and project. Yeah, we are trying to not make it into a sales show. Okay. So we, we should focus on, on some community activity or, or other efforts. Because if they want to sell something, they can organize their own events. And I think this is the proper place. This it is the community part. So we are, we are trying to be careful to, to um, keep, keep this rule for everybody. Yeah.
Yeah, but I guess it is the responsibility of the organizers of the event. So if I if I promote this as a community event, let's let it be a community event. Yeah, so, so we decided after that uh, that uh, you know an hour or whatever uh, the event for meetup we have, uh, so that the meetup will have to be submitted to the So I think, uh, and I, I really wanted to show that uh, this this could be done as well. I mean, we we really believe in doing things that that the the community. Uh, so it's very important that the the, the, the company is in a point that 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 they want to get back to the So the important thing is. Yeah, but from other side, you cannot live without the vendors. Yeah, so the, the finally, if you want to organize large events, you need to find some funding from them. So you need to find a good ba balance between the community and the vendor content. Yeah, so Yeah, of course. The difference between selling and evangelizing the community, and, and I know my perspective is, it's not about my program and my products. It's about it's about you, and it's you know it's about you and your community, and how do we help you guys, not how do we sell? Yeah, but I guess a great technology and a great speaker mm -hmm. can sell the product anyway in right. in a different way. So it is open source. It is a little bit different than mm -hmm. from the typical sales we used to do maybe years ago. Yeah, for the user group, uh, initially I found it from my own pocket. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because it, it was just a hobby project for me to find out how can we survive. But uh, we used to get some offerings from different companies, maybe think about small things, they are offering a venue for the event or offering, uh, offering some free pizza or beers. It is not a huge cost uh, anyway. And the other story, maybe there used to be some official programs from the foundation, maybe funding the birthday parties. And uh, it is a good start for a new user group to start somehow and get an initial funding for that. Okay, thank you. Thank you, thank you so much, Martin. <laughs>